Hi, today I'm looking at the Noctua D15 G2. The Noctua D15 was considered as one of the best air cooler you can buy. I'm curious if it's still the case with the new version. The cooler is retailing for around $200 Canadian. I will compare it with the Thermaltake Perless Assassin uh, 120 SE a cooler that sell for around $50 Canadian, so a quarter of the price. Let's do a quick unboxing. The cooler come with two 140 millimeter redesigned fan, and it's also come with their H2 thermal paste. They do mention on the box that you have a symmetric fin stack and eight pipe for cooling and it's their next generation cooler. It's been in development for a while by Noctua. I also like that they put all the specification of the fan directly on the box. So if someone see them straight in the store, at least you have the option to look at the spec and to know if it's gonna fit in your case or not. When opening the box, you can see that like first is the accessories that are on top. It come with a screwdriver, the H2 thermal paste, the mounting kit for AMD and for Intel. I really like the design of the box. It seems well designed and it protect the cooler quite well. Like my box was damaged in shipping, but the cooler was totally fine. We can see here the content of the accessory box. I appreciate that they gave you a screwdriver and the thermal paste with it. That adds to the value of the package. For AMD, you, all, you also have straight from the box an offset mount to get better cooler performance. I also like that they give you a thermal paste applicator so you don't have leakage when you apply the thermal paste on your component. Normally when I install an air cooler, I always like look at a quick video because there's always a part that is not clear, but it's really not the case with Noctua. The instructions are pretty easy and super clear, so I appreciate that. You can see here the cooler in the box. It's well protected and it's not moving. It's a massive cooler, and I know that the Noctua brown color scheme uh, is not for everyone. I do wish that they had the all black version for my build, but it's really not a big deal for me. You can see here the cooler from the side and also from the front. It seemed really well designed and very solid. Here we can see the back of the fan with the fin stack. The surface for the CPU also look perfect. So it should be really flat and give you good performance. But of course, we'll test that. To do the installation, I first need to remove my Thermaltake PLS Assassin 120 Special Edition. You can see that I was going for a white and black build. After you remove the central fan, it's quite easy to access the two screw you need to remove the cooler. I had to remove the old thermal paste, but it's not, and the mounting hardware, but it's not really an issue. Okay, now that we have a clean CPU, it's finally time to install the Noctua fan. Like I said, the instructions are super easy to follow. You first need to put those four gray support for the screw. After that, I put the seven millimeter supporting plate. So by default, the advice to put the offset to get better cooling performance. So that's what I did here. I then applied the thermal paste the way 
that they said we should in the instruction. We'll see if that's enough. I feel any way that you apply thermal paste, there's going to be some people that will complain. So hopefully I did an okay job. Then I installed it, the cooler. It was super easy. Normally I fight it a little to align it with the screw, but this one went right in. So that was super easy after you remove the central fan. I then remounted the central fan and plug the adapter uh, to get the power for the fan. There's no RGB on those fans and I think for a lot of people that's a plus. So now let's look at the performance. Let's look at the spec of the computer. I'm using the 7800 X3D processor. Uh, I understand that this processor only have a TDP of 120 watts and a TG max of 89 Celsius. But I think it's a more realistic scenario that buying uh, Intel CPU because if you're a gamer, you probably get uh, in the last couple of years bought an X3D processor or at least an AMD one. The first thing I did is to check in the BIOS and in Windows, when the computer is idle, uh, what kind of temperature I would get in. I would get 42 Celsius with the Peerless SSA and 41 Celsius with the D15 G2. Know that it's like where I live right now, outside with the humidity, it's like 48. So the, in the inside temperature in my room is 27 Celsius. So that will affect some of the performance. And that's with air conditioning on. And then run a CPU burn test with OCCT after five minutes. With the PLS SSA, the temperature was around 76.1, while it was 74.3 for the Noctua D15. I then run Furmark uh, with the 1440p testing. I know it's a GPU test, but I was curious what kind of performance I would get from the CPU. I got 54.5 Celsius with the PLS SSA and uh, 53.6 with the Noctua D15. But of course, those are not really realistic workload. So I decided to test three games after that. I tested all the game in 1440p and keeping an eye on hardware monitor. For Divinity Original Sin 2 with ultra quality. With Divinity Original Sin 2 in ultra quality, I got 60.6 Celsius with the PLS SSA and 61 Celsius with the Noctua D15 G2. So they're basically the same result and then the same margin of errors. I then run the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at 1440p with DLSS balance and look at the IS temperature that both cooler would achieve during the first part of the benchmark. And they both got exactly the same result at 76.8 Celsius. I then switched to Cyberpunk 2077 uh, with DLSS at auto and retracing at low. I got 62.6 Celsius for the Peerless SSA and 63.5 for the Noctua D15 G2. So they're basically always close in result until we get to acoustic. While running OC CT uh, CPU bench load, I removed the uh, thermal glass side panel from my computer and put the acoustic audiometer as close as possible of the cooler without touching. I got 43.2 decibel with the peerless SSA, but only 37.5 decibel with the D15 G2. I was very impressed how quiet uh, the cooler could be with the CPU being at 100% usage. Of course, the 
case I'm using as a very thick tempered glass panel so that would mask most of the sound but the new fans are really impressive from Noctua so what are the plus and minus then? On the positive you have a new cooler with a great build quality it's well designed and the installation is super easy you have amazing acoustic performance you have a six year warranty so you can get peace of mind for that by default you have the offset mount for amd and it's super easy to install that way and of course noctua reputation for support and future proofing is a good positive now the negative size i think the price and the value for the performance you're getting and let's be clear the thermal performance not the acoustic one versus the competition is something to consider so what are the conclusion here well the d15 g2 is a great cooler with a great build quality and easy to install the issue is the performance for the price you can get a competitor like the peerless assassin 120 for around a quarter of the price and for the cooling, you probably get to 95 to 98% of the performance there. The acoustic is where it really shines. The fans are amazing and you can see how quiet they are. So I think for most users, it's going to be a tough pill to swallow, uh, paying $200 for that cool, uh, Canadian for that cooler. But um, enthusiast users know that you also buy an Octua for the support and the quality of the components. You know that like if in 2027 20, uh, AMD launch a new socket, AM6, and the mounting hardware is different, you know that you'll be able to get the mountware hardware directly from Axua for free. Also, uh, their support response super fast. Uh, I contacted them to get the, the last price list for the media, and in one hour, I got a response by email. And when I recontacted them to know if I should get the AMD specific version or the G2 like I got here, in an hour also, I got a response by someone saying, well, if you use the offset bracket, you should get around the same kind of performance and you would get the versatility uh, being able in the future to mount it to uh, Intel hardware if you need. So I really appreciate how quick uh, the support is. And you can see it's an engineer company first. You, so, you also have a six year warranty uh, and often cooler like will be used more than in one build. So having that peace of mind also have value. I'm also curious if we're getting to the limit of what's possible with the uh, air cooling with a big tower of aluminum fin. That's one of the issues is that for 200, you get an AIO uh, territories. I personally like air cooling because if you have a catastrophe, uh, you don't have liquid everywhere in your computer. But it's also something to consider for the price. Thanks for watching.